mucho de paz y una oportunidad para que nuevas historias, otras historias, lleguen a los territorios más afectados por el conflicto armado y la inequidad en Colombia. Todas y todos podemos ayudar a que la paz se siga escribiendo en el Bajo Cauca, en el Catatumbo, en el Pacífico Nariñense, en el Chocó y en el Guaviare. Territorios que sufren graves tragedias a causa de la violencia armada. Únete y dona un libro nuevo o en perfecto estado para que el poder transformador de la lectura llegue a los niños y niñas, jóvenes y adultos de las zonas que más lo necesitan. Very, very happy to be here right now with one of our most precious authors, Kim Leggett, one of our closest literary friends, Esteban Parra. We are now presenting El Año de Gracia, the Grace Year, during this FILBO, Feria Internacional del Libro de Bogotá Book Fair. This will be a very interesting interview. It is the first time that we have live Kim Leggett, so we're very, very content about this. We hope that all of the readers enjoy this, and please, Kim and Esteban, take the show away. Thank you. Thank you, Stefania. Well, as Stefania say, uh, I have the pleasure to interview the American writer Kim Leggett, and we are going to be talking about her recent novel. Look at this stunning and beautiful cover, The Grace Year. So you can imagine how happy, nervous, and excited I am, I am for this conversation because I love so much the meaning and the power inside Turney's story for uh, the story it really is so nice to, i'm so excited and nervous and happy too so we're 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 on the same same wavelength so king how was your weekend how was my weekend yes oh my gosh uh very good i'm here in los angeles it is beautiful every day and sunny and um so I'm I'm really happy to be here. I wish I was with you right now. We could be doing this in person. That would be even better. Yes. <laughs> Maybe in, in, in another moment. I know, right? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yes. First of all, what we're going to find on the grace year, a little review, a little abstract for the readers. So you want me to tell you what it's about? Yes. Okay, so basically the Grace Year is about an insular society um, that believes that when girls turn 16, when they come of age, that they're full of all this dangerous magic. Like they can lure grown men from their beds and, you know, wreak all kind of havoc. havoc. So um, what they do is they send the girls away for their grace year for a year in the wilderness. And um, what they find out is it's not even the elements that they really have to fear. Their biggest fear is uh, each other. And um, they, they go out there with the, with the idea that they're gonna rid themselves of their magic so they can come back purified and ready for marriage. But not all of them come back. And um, the name is very um, deceptive. It sounds like such a lovely year, the grace year, right? <laughs> it turns yeah. out it's not it's so in grace. Good. Yeah. It's in grace, not at all. No. King, how did the idea for the book come to you? It's funny, I because I am, you know, my background, like I kind of cut my teeth writing horror books. Like, you know, so this was the first book that um, doesn't really directly deal with any of that. It kind of came out of the blue. Um, I was I was in Penn Station in New York City, which is a crazy place. Anyways, no one wants to be there. And I was staring up at the screen, you know, just kind of wasting my time and um, 
and I noticed this girl in front of me and she was probably like 13 or 14, you know, just kind of all arms and legs and, you know, didn't really know what to do with her body. She was just nervous and giddy and so cute. And her family was there. And, and I just remembered, like, when I looked at her, I remembered that time, like how awkward that is. And you just don't even know what you're doing with yourself. And this, uh, this businessman passed by and I think it was just instinctual. It wasn't anything, you know, malicious or anything, but he just looked her up and down, you know, head to toe. And, and I just thought, oh my gosh, like she has no idea what she's in for, like no idea. And, and I was glad for it. I was like, I'm so glad she didn't notice, you know? And then I saw a, a woman, an older woman walk by kind of looking her up and down, but with a completely different vibe. Like I felt like she was kind of looking at her like competition. Maybe she represented like everything she thought she'd lost or that she'd never get back, but it was clear like she was prey or competition. And, and it just, it hit me so hard. Um, but yeah, I just, I wanted, I think the big thing, oh, I can't even tell that story without crying. <laughs> Still, oh, sorry. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but anyways, I just, I just had, she had no idea what she was in for. And I don't. I think we do, I think in a way, like we send our girls, I have daughters, you know, out into the world kind of unprepared for any of this. And we don't talk about it a lot. You know, it's kind of one of those things that we just have, to, you know, we kind of let them figure out for themselves, which is not great. So for me, this book was about just trying to find a way to talk about it and an open conversation between all generations of women, because I feel like a lot of this book has to do with um, generational silence, you know, and how we don't really talk to each other. And I think some, for some older people, it's like, well, you know, I went through that, you know, so they need to figure that out for themselves, you know, kind of attitude. And for others, it's like, well, I don't want to bring that up in case it's not happening to them because I don't want to like poison the well. I don't want to, you know, give them ideas that they're not experiencing, but then everybody's just kind of going through this in silence. So for me, it was, this book was a way to work through it in my own head, you know, of what I felt and what I saw. And also, you know, a way that I could talk to my daughters, you know, even about all of this. It was, it was really the only way I could process it. The crazy year opened the eyes for many young women around the world. But at what moment did you open your eyes to the reality, to the things that happen around the world? Yeah. I mean, I think as a young person, you know, I mean, I, I, I was very keenly aware of all of that, you know, um, early on, but, and once I saw it, I couldn't unsee it, you know, it was just everywhere. And, but I don't, I think I just kind of buried it and, you know, you just kind of go through life. And it was really in that moment at the train station, which is crazy, where it just hit me like a lightning bolt. And I actually, when I got on that train, I wrote the whole opening of the Grace here and the ending, and it never changed. Like it was exactly the way it was. So it was in that four hour train ride, that book was a whole living thing in my head. Okay. If we can, if we see and analyze the past, we can say things are better now. Maybe women have more opportunities, yeah. more rights, and for example, lower voices. And yes, many things are changing. But if we saw 
the things that are now happening on Afghanistan, for example, uh, um, many other things are still wrong. Can the literature take part in the construction of a better or different future for our society and for women? What do you think? Yeah, it's a it's a lot. That subject is a lot. I I I think part of, you know, writing this was my frustration over what was going on in my own country at the time, you know, with the election and just how heartbroken we were, you know, when when that when, you know, Trump was elected and um I know I'm not supposed to get very political, but I mean that's that's the truth. I felt very very heartbroken and, and a little hopeless you know it just felt like all of a sudden like i could almost taste it like change was coming change was happening you know leading up to the election i remember just walking down the street in new york and feeling very confident you know and me too was happening and all these things and i was just like oh my gosh finally you know this is gonna happen this big change and and it was almost instantaneous like the next day i just didn't feel as safe you know walking down the street after the election i just um it made me realize you know that things are gonna take a lot longer than i would like them to you know and um and i think part of the grace here like writing it the way that i did was really kind of to deal with that. It was like, okay, we, there was a big loss here and, and, you know, it was a big step back, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. It's, it's going to take a while because we're not quite there yet. And I felt like the grace year for me kind of mimicked where I felt we were in the feminist movement right now, which is kind of right in the middle. Um, and nobody likes the middle, like the middle is horrible. And, and, you know, you just like, it's like one step forward, two steps back and, you know, this push and pull, but it is changing, but we just, it, we're not quite there yet. I mean, I would have loved to have written the grace year at the ending to been this, like we win and, you know, victory, you know, but it's just not, I really wanted it to mimic where I thought we were in the movement and also give people hope. But it's not like a it's not like a joyous hope, but it is a hope. It is a burning deep hope, you know, that we are gonna get there. Ugh, it's a lot. I enjoy that. I enjoy that the end of the book be so realistic. Yeah. Because you hope other and for the book and for the history, for the attorney's history. But when you finish the book, you you feel like, yes, this is a real war. Yep, I know. And it's, for me, it, it was really hopeful. I know a lot of people were, you know, sad at the end, but it it is realistic and it is how things are going. And we have to hang on to that and, and realize and have patience. And, you know, these big changes, they don't happen overnight. Like they take a really long time and are, victories are built on the backs you know of those who came before us and it's it's gonna be a bit it's gonna be a minute also we're reading fiction every page of this book feels like a, a reflection of the reality and the difficulties that we may have to live day after day yeah Kim, in your writing process what was the most challenging thing when you gave life in the novel to situations that you face directly or indirectly in more or less proportion? Yeah, I mean, it was it was a really difficult book to write because it was so personal. Like I really, when I wrote this, I didn't even think anyone would read it. Like I just, I thought, you know, because nobody, it's kind of over and done with. Like, you know, when you talk about like a feminist dystopian novel, like that's kind of over and done, you know? And so I think the publishers were like, no, no, don't don't do that um but i knew that i had something fresh to say and i had a fresh take on it and and i just i thought maybe my daughters would read it maybe my mom you know i just didn't think anyone would be able to relate to it in the same way that i did but 
So the whole thing was really this huge learning process for me too. Like I learned so much about myself writing this book um and about women and how I treat women and how I feel about women like a lot of that is so internalized so I had to really analyze my own thought process um on all of this so I felt like I went through everything with those girls like I I felt like I was right there with them I um and I could relate to every single like I could have written a book on every single one of those characters in that book. Like I, like, especially the men in the, you know, like the guards or the, you know, or um, Michael or his, you know, and all of them, the poachers, like I could have written an entire book on each one of those, you know, sections of people, but um, I had to keep it very focused, you know, from Tierney's eyes, which is a very, and especially the way I wrote it, you know, I wanted the reader to feel like they were right there in it. And so I had to keep the blinders on. It was really hard, you know, not to delve into other characters. I really wanted to. Um, but I, it was emotionally really taxing to write that book. It was, it was hard. And um, you see, I'm very emotional. So, I mean, I cried a lot writing that book. A lot. Wasn't easy, Perfect. any of it. You give me the, the sign to start to talk about Derny, the main character of the book. I love her. Me too. She's brave. She's determined. She is fierce. She's curious. Uh, sometimes a little afraid for obvious reasons. Yeah. How she came to you? She, I mean, I think she represents so many girls, you know, that I know. I mean, girl, teenage girls are amazing. Like. There, I mean, I I could be with teenage girls all day long. Like I love them. They're so full of life and interesting ideas. And sometimes I think I was the smartest I ever was when I was 16 yes. years old. You know, I feel like I'm yes. getting dumber. Um, but but she, I mean, the thing that I love most about her is her resilience. Like you said, like she just keeps moving forward, and it's not it's not always pretty. It's not always good. She makes bad choices. Like we all do, you know, it is fearful. And the thing that I found most interesting about her is that she was a very reluctant hero. Like she had no intention of doing this at all and really didn't have a lot of these qualities. Um, but she developed them over time and through hardship. And like we all do, you know, we become, you know, our heroes of our own stories. And I felt like, you know, the more interesting story, like I could have easily told, you know, of the beginning of the grace year and how they got there. And that would have been fascinating, you know, and I could have told the ending, you know, with grace and like, you know, how that comes to pass, you know, and I just felt like Robert, she deserved yes. her own story. She deserved her own story. She was the middle of the story, Tierney. You know, she's a stepping stone in this process, but I just felt she was so important that I had to do it. One thing that I like the, the most about Tierney is that she never gave up. She no. always <laughs> continued. That is amazing. I love Tierney. And that's what we have to do in life, right? We have so many setbacks and so many heartaches and so many things. And all we have to do is just keep moving forward. That's it. That's all we can do. And she always had hope that it was going to be okay and that it was going to get better. And I think we have to we have to have that too. Continuing with Tony, she's constantly battled between fear and hope the eternal human dilemma for kim which of these two is a stronger fear or hope for you um for society wow um i mean fear and hope are like the flip side of the coin right and you know hope can be really dangerous hope sometimes is the scariest thing you can feel because it's so easy to sit in fear, right? I mean, that's so easy. And sometimes it's 
the hardest thing to do is to hope and to keep hoping and to keep that alive because the whole world kind of wants to break you down um, and everything around us. So, gosh, they can both, both of those things can overtake you. They can both, you know, take over your life, but uh, obviously hope is the better. <laughs> the better side of that coin. I'd rather be chronically hopeful than chronically fearful. So um, I think hope is stronger than anything. I mean, fear coming, you know, it comes and goes, but if you hang on even to a little shred of hope, you can do anything. The book's marketing phrase from the, for the Grace Year describes the novel as a feminist dystopia that you told me recently in the conversation. Now what is some people say that current feminist movement is going too far and being too extreme in a bad way. Are you agreeing with this statement? You know, it's funny, I think about this a lot and it's, it's like a pendulum, right? And it swings and it swings and sometimes you gotta swing too far, you know, to come back to the center. And I um, I do think that I wish, I really wish that women um, could find like a common ground just with each other. Cause I think there's a lot of, I mean, it's kind of what we've been bred to do is we're all separating into all these separate little groups, which I understand. And that, that, that's what I mean by taking a long time. This is a process. And it's gonna, it's gonna be like that. Like we're gonna be these kinds of feminists, we're gonna be these kinds of feminists, you know, it's very separated. And I think eventually we'll find common ground, but that pendulum has to swing. It has to swing. And you have to um just let it let it do its thing, you know, and just keep, you know, fighting your own fight and getting there. But I do think, I know for me personally, like when because I always thought of myself as a pretty decent feminist, you know, I was, I always thought I was pretty good at all that, you know, and when I started writing this book, like, I, I started really questioning myself, like, if I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like her, I don't like that girl, you know, it's like, I started asking myself, well, why, why don't you like her, like, what is it, and, you know, was I jealous, did I feel threatened, or did she represent something that I didn't like in myself, like what was it? And I swear like nine times out of 10, when I thought about it, the issue was my own, it was my own problem. And so I feel like once I realized that and took a step back and started to try to meet women where they are and not where I wanted them to be, it's like my whole world opened up, like my whole viewpoint opened up. and. I feel like a lot of this change that we want is really going to be achieved through acceptance and um geez just just being open to other people and their opinions and their values and realize that we're not all going to be the same like we're all going to be different but we all have a common purpose you know and i felt like tyranny was that too she didn't like everyone you know it was just yes. like yeah normal. i know i know so i do i'm i mean i constantly work on it but it was a big that was a big eye-opening experience for me and just being gracious for other women and grateful and you know building each other up like that's the thing like i think there's so much talk about you know smashing the patriarchy you know and it's all <laughs> that's awesome like i want to do that too like i really would like that but I feel like if we even took a portion of that energy towards that and put it into building each other up, building up other women, we wouldn't even have to worry. Like we do it naturally, like it would just happen. I just feel like we need to put a lot more energy into each other right now, but that's, it's kind of a radical idea, but I, I do, I do think that that's kind of, you that's know. That's important. It is. It's really important. That's really important. I just saw the flowers on your shoulders, and it reminded me a uh, main element in the novel, because the flowers, no matter the type, the color, or the meaning, 
that they have are really important throughout the novel. What did the idea, why did you choose or you decide to include it as a main element of the Grace Year? Well, I've always I've always been fascinated with um flower, you know, meaning and you know, the Victorians were really into, you know, all of this flower meaning. Oh, it always cracked me up thinking about, you know, sending someone flowers and you could read so much into a flower, you know. I mean, you could you could spend hours thinking about what that flower meant, you know, if a, if a suitor sent that to you and you'd be, you know, trying to decipher the meaning through this flower. And I was always really fascinated with that. And I think women, I think flowers are, you know, kind of considered, you know, very gentle and very uh, fragile and, you know, like a lot, you know, like a lot of men think of women. And I mean, they're really resilient flowers or if you think about the anatomy of a flower, it's pretty, it's pretty badass. Like they are, they will find a way, you know, they will find a way. So I felt that that was significant and, um, and also that women kind of have a secret language. I feel like you can walk into a room, like women, women know what, what's going on, you know, cause we've had to read a room so well um just because of fear or whatever's going on in society you know we've become highly attuned to everything and around us and so i think women kind of communicate in a very secret kind of language and i just wanted to give you know an actual you know um item to that you know flowers are very tactile and i just i don't know i just thought it was it was it just fascinated me I had roses in my house the last weekend. Oh. I love roses, red um, roses a lot. I do too. I actually have like a bunch right here um, <laughs> in my office. So I do too. And they're, they're all flowers really, like they're so beautiful. And um, I don't know, something that everyone can relate to. There will always be flowers, you know? Yes, like women, all flowers are beautiful. Agreed. I agree. Another topic that you address in the book, maybe the one I like the most, is the use of faith, religious beliefs, and political power as mechanisms of social control. Is this use an unavoidable problem for humanity? What do you think? Jeez. I don't know. I ask myself that all the time. Like I talk about this exact thing all the time. I'm such a fun dinner guest, you know. <laughs> I come over. I'm just like, what do you guys think? Um, but I do think like was a lot of things that people don't realize is the patriarchy and that whole system. It harms everyone except for that very elite group of people you know it harms men of all you know it it's harmful to everyone. we're all caught up in that same system um the only people that benefit are this upper echelon of people i don't even know any of those people but you know it's um it's very apparent to me that everyone suffers under this uh men women everyone so i do think for now it's definitely something we're going to be dealing with for a while, you know, and have been forever. Um, so I'm excited to see like the changes. I'm really hopeful, you know, that for my daughters and for everybody I know, all the, everyone I know, like that there are some significant changes because it's just broken, you know? For change, the reading of the conversation, I have three words and I need to talk about with you about these three words sisterhood friendship and solidarity yeah yeah those are tricky i mean because i think like we talked about before you know about solidarity and you know sisterhood and all of that like it doesn't mean i think people take it differently you know we're not going to be all like singing around a campfire you know it's not like that it's we all have our different experiences and you know different ideas to bring to the table and disagreements like we're, none of us are going to all agree on anything you know i i think that as soon as we can put 
all those differences aside and come together, you know, in a way and not in a way that is cheesy or, you know, like we're not all going to have the same ideals. Um, but that's when things will really start to change. And like I said, it's, it's, it's about, it's through acceptance, um, and generosity with each other and gentleness and love and all of those things. And sometimes it's really hard to set aside your ideas about people and women and things. And, you know, we've all been brought up in such peculiar ways. Um, but it's going to take a lot of like thinking about it and thinking about our own behavior towards women. Um, that's when things will really change. I really feel like it. What happened when you start to receive the writer, the, the readers reviews of the grace year? I was shocked. I honestly was shocked. Like, cause again, like I felt like it was so personal, like so personal and and that my viewpoint might be a little weird or something, you know, just, just my own. I didn't think anyone would relate to it, let alone like in a different country or, you know, it blew my mind. It really did. And that people all over the world are like feeling the same thing. It's kind of mind blowing. It really is. I, I'm still not over it. Still shocking. Kim, this reading made me think a lot about the word privilege and how it comes implicit in being a man. Yeah. Because, because being a woman carries a huge weight and often leads to life in a becoming a survival exercise and not something enjoyable. And I think the life and your days are perfect if you enjoy it. Right. I think that. But at the same time, the way that you managed to break the reader, because you broke me in many pieces, Aww. and transmit so much through words, are incredible. But you did that. <laughs> like, you brought that. You brought your own experiences and your own emotional intelligence to that. Because honestly, like, my writing is pretty sparse. I don't, you know, I, I try to make it as compact as possible and the least amount of words to describe something and the reader takes over, you know, that's, that's, um, it's a funny thing and you can't really explain it. It's it, with this book, like I could have worked on it forever. Like they had to pry it out of my hands. Like I just did not want to let it go. And I could have just kept working on it for years and but it's funny, it's an alchemy with a book. Like when you feel, there's no really way to describe it. It's just, right now it's not perfect, but it works and there's some kind of magic to it. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it happened, but this is, this evokes a certain feeling and it asks the right questions. And at some point you just have to leave it alone. Even there are so many things I'd love to fix and, you know, work on, but it was just one of those things. It was just a moment and I don't even know how it works or why it works. But for me, it was, it did what it was supposed to do. And, um, but the reader brings so much and I felt bad at first because I asked the reader, oh, so much of the reader, you know, I asked them to trust me because there's really not a lot of background. You just jump right in. Yes. You're off. And, and that takes a lot of trust for the reader to be like, okay, I feel safe here. I'm going to go on this journey because you have no context. You're just kind of plopped in just like everybody else. And it's very disorienting. So anyone who was able to just let go and go on the journey, I feel like that's the perfect reader for this. But it was hard for a lot of people who um, are like big, like uh, science fiction readers or, you know, because they want to know, they want to know, like, when is this? Where is this? You know, like, 
where, how did they get here? You know, they're important questions. And I just kind of asked the reader, just like, let go, like, let's go on this. So I, it's a lot, it's a lot that I asked of you. And I really appreciate that you, you know, were able to do that. It means a lot to me. Yes, this game that you create in, in what the reader feels reflected by, by herself, by himself, or reflected her mom's story, her sister's story, yeah. uh, or her friend's story. It's incredible. I read page after page, and I say, "Oh fuck, it happened to my grandmother. It I happened know. to my sister." And this is incredible for you to write it, and it's sad for us, like a society. It's. I know. I really like the book. It was hard. It was hard to write. It really was. And um, and it's kind of ruined me, to be honest. Like I, because I used to write these fun little horror books, you know, that were just, you know, just kind of a fun thing. And, and now, like, I can't write anything that's not this intense, you know, like it ruined me. I can't go back, you know, now every book has to mean just as much. Um, so. It's been interesting. It was a really interesting journey and I met so many wonderful people doing this and it just really opened up my whole world. And for, for in this conversation, I just have to say thank you to you for the pain in all the pages, <laughs> for the things they learned with this book and for reaffirming how powerful literature is. This is the, the definition of this book powerful and how powerful literature is for me so thank you so much thank you thank you so much and i really appreciate it next time we'll have to meet in person yes i hope <laughs> it's still good. so thank you so much for all the viewers for all the readers for being around the house for this opportunity and please go to the bookstores and buy el año de la gracia the grace year Thank, Thank you so you much. So much. Thanks.